the sun up y'all here. I am here to do a review on Little Women of LA Season 8, Episode 16. Earlier I did one, I did Episode 15. This is Episode 16, and the title of this one is Bearing It All. Okay, so, let's see. Here is all, I don't know what's going on with it. Uh, should I get another angle? Let me see. Angle? I don't know what's going on. Here it looks flat. Let me see if I can get another angle here. Cause I don't know about that. Mm, I don't know. This way. This way. Sorry. This way. I think this is better. Okay. All right. I'm ready. Why is this sticking out? What's going on? I don't know what's happening. It doesn't matter. Anyway, all right. Starts out with Christy and Autumn are meeting um, up with a makeup artist. His name is Nick. He's going to be doing the makeup for um, Christy's fashion show. And Nick is wearing a smoky eye that's fabulous. It looks so good. Um... So Nick is using Autumn as a model for um, the look for the um, for, for the fashion show is going to be. So he puts on this red lipstick on her and it looks awesome. It looks so good. I want that lipstick. So um, Autumn asks Christy, is everything okay with the ladies? Um, and Christy said she's inviting everyone but Tara. And I think that's a bad idea. Tara apologized to her, so she should invite Tara. She doesn't, she doesn't want to keep the beef going, you know. Um, so she has a conversation with Autumn. And at the end of the conversation, she decides that she really doesn't know what she's going to do, whether she's going to invite Tara or not. But I really hope she invites Tara because that's just going to cause problems. And we don't need that. So the next scene is Tanya's on the set of her play, Roxy, I think the name is of the play is. And she's producing the play and starring in the play. And things don't seem to be going well. People aren't showing up for rehearsal. One guy forgot his, his suit that he's going to be um, supposed to be rehearsing in because he says he doesn't want to get it dirty. And then the lighting is no good. So they're having, they're having problems. They're having problems. Yeah, but they're having, they're, she's having problems. I hope they get it together by the time it's time for the um for the play. Okay, next scene is Tara's in the studio. You know, she has headphones on. She's in the booth singing, and then Jasmine shows up. And Tara tells Jasmine that she's recording a Christmas album for her son, Grayson. My hair is really annoying the crap out of me. I don't know what's happening. It's just really annoying me. I can't, I just, I don't know. What's, I'm so annoyed. What is this? Why is that stick? You know what? Let me do this. Is that better? I think that's a tiny better. I don't know. Anyway, yeah, um, Tara is in a studio and she's in the booth singing with headphones on and then Jasmine walks, you know, Jasmine walks in and Tara tells um, Jasmine that she's recording an album for her, a Christmas album for her son, Grayson. And Tara asks um, Jasmine to be a part, you know, to do to, to be a part of the album. And don't um, Tara remember that Jasmine choked when she was supposed to sing on stage in front of ten people? Uh, maybe I, doing an album in a booth is, is different. I don't know. But when she asked Jasmine, Jasmine looked like she's about to throw up. She looks so scared and nervous, and she's shivering and she's shaking. <laughs> Jasmine is something else. Anyway, um, so, um, so Jasmine sings, Jesus loves me, and she said, the, she, she don't even know the words to Jesus loves me, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so, little ones to he belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. She said, the Bible told me so. That's not, that's not the right word. 
anyway, she tried to hit the note up high instead of keeping it low, and it sounded horrible to me. I'm no singer, but it sounded horrible to me. But, um, what's her name? Tara seems to love it. Okay, let's see what happened next. Anyway, let me see. Tara asked Jasmine if she worked out going to Cancun with Chris. And Jasmine told Tara that she... Oh, Jasmine told Tara that she'll go only for a couple of days. She doesn't want to leave the kids in the new house. In the new house by themselves or for a long period of time. She may not be by themselves. For a long period of time, she said. I don't know what's going on right here. I should stop this video and do something because I'm really annoyed. Oh, look, what is that? Why is this sticking out like that? This is really annoying me. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. You know what? I'm gonna be... No, I was gonna go get a... Uh, I'm really annoyed. Anyway. <sighs> okay. Yeah, so, um, yeah. Jasmine said she's gonna, um, go to Cancun, but, um... She's going to leave early, leave Cancun early. She's only going to stay a couple of days because she does not want to leave the kids um, in the new house for a long period of time. I don't know why, if they're going to have a nanny, why. But anyway, that's what she said she's going to do. That's what she said she's going to do. So Jasmine asked Tara if she's going to, if, if she's going, and Tara said she doesn't know. How can you not know when you set this whole trip up? She set this whole trip up. And she put the whole thing together. How can she not know if she's going to go or not? So next scene is Elena and Tanya meet up for coffee. And Elena is, um, she's wearing an outfit similar to an outfit that Jasmine had on, I think, a couple of episodes back. She's wearing this biker outfit, not biker outfit, an outfit that, um... The guys wear when they do NASCAR. Big, this jumpsuit that zips up the front. That is, that, that outfit looks hot and funky for California. It looks, it looks, I don't know. Ooh. And if you have to go to a public bathroom, you have to unzip it. You have to take it off of your shoulders. Take, pull it over your breast. Pull it over your tummy. Pull it over your hips. Pull it down to your knees and, you know, half sit to go to the bathroom. With it dragging on the floor, it may even fall into the toilet. No, I wouldn't wear anything like that. Mm -mm. No, not me. I wouldn't, mm -mm. I wouldn't wear anything like that. That's crazy. I guess that's the style. That's the style in L.A. to wear that um, NASCAR outfit. Anyway, um, uh, Tanya asked Elena if she is coming to her grand opening. And Elena told Tanya that she started acting classes and she will have to see if she can leave her acting class early to um, make the grand opening. Now, I love Elena, but um, I don't think she, she will come out of her comfort zone to act. You know, I don't think she's the type to, to, to act, to, come, to step out of her, her comfort, zone, comfort zone and be somebody else to act. I hope she proves me wrong. Anyway, Elena says she started, she started acting, doing acting classes um, about six or seven months ago, and she didn't want to share it with anybody because she she thinks she starts things and then change her mind, and she didn't want to tell them, and then she would change her mind, and they look at her like, damn, I thought you were acting, and which is true. She does start things and then stop. She said that she started doing doing it to build self confidence and for her English to improve on her English. And she says she's really enjoying it. That's good for her. Next scene is, it's the day of Christy's fashion show. And things are not going well with Christy. She, it, she makes, she's making it look like it's not going well, but it looked like it was going well to me. Um, her mentor, um, Miguel, couldn't make it. So Christy had another friend helping her out. And Christy says her models were being divas. Elena shows up and she's backstage with Christy. I guess she helped out a little bit. And Chrissy has a model, um, a model that goes by the name of Plastic that doesn't get along with Tanya. I think she's a trans, she's a trans, she's a trans, 
transgender. She changed her sex from male to female. So that's a transgender, right? Um, so, Elena reminds Christy that Tanya does not get along with plastic. And they did show a little clip of um, Tanya and plastic getting, you know, getting into it with each other. And Tanya seemed like she was being very raunchy. She, you know, said something about plastic, plastic not being, a, being an it or not being being half man, half woman or something. She was out of line for that. You don't say something like that to somebody. But yeah, it, it, I, don't, I, didn't, I don't think I saw that episode at all. Because I never saw Plastic before. But Plastic says she's fully woman now. So anyway, people are showing up. The models are getting their hair and makeup done. Drew is so beautiful. She's the shortest little person. And she's so beautiful. Tanya and Jasmine, they show up. Elena tells Tanya and Jasmine that the model plastic is in the show. That's the person that Tanya had a problem with. And Tanya tells Jasmine and Elena that her and plastic, they squashed their beef. So Jasmine told her to go backstage and say hello. She was being messy. Jasmine was being messy. I really don't know what's going on right here. I don't understand why it's sticking out like that. I don't get it. I don't know. Anyway. And backstage, Christy tells Plastic that Tanya is here, is there. And um, Plastic basically, basically said that she wasn't going to say anything to Tanya. And Plastic asked um, Christy if Tara is going to be there. And Christy said that, told Plastic that she did invite um, Tara. And Plastic asked Christy, why would you invite Tara when all Tara is going to do is talk shit? And that's true. That's what Tara does. And um, Christy says, well, she's going to give Tara one more chance. And pa Plastic basically tells Christy that she has her back. So, um, Christy seems stressed out, but everything looks like it's going fine to me. And everybody's here, makeup looks good. And I'm anxious to see the lingerie show. So Tara does show up. And in, her, in Tara's confessional, she said that Christy's fashion show is either going to be spectacular or a total shit show. And she has a front row seat. I think um, Tara wants to see Christy falls flat on her face. She does not want to see Christy succeed at all. So the show starts and ladies are walking down the runway. And Autumn looks amazing. Her hair is great. Her makeup is great. The outfit that she's wearing is great. She looks amazing. You go, Autumn. Uh, the fashion show was great. I loved it. Um, and Tara's face was sour because the fashion show was good. At one time, she made a comment about one of the outfits. She made a nasty comment about one of the outfits. It's one with the cape. She's like, I'm not going to wear a cape as a lingerie. I'm not going to wear a cape to bed. True, but damn, she's got to keep her mouth shut about it, you know? Um, Christy did an amazing job. And at, um, at backstage, Drew got emotional. She was thankful to Christy for creating lingerie for um, for little people. So Tanya, Tanya leaves early. She said she had to go rehearse for her play. And Elena doesn't believe her. Elena thinks that um, Tanya left early because she doesn't want, she, she's trying to avoid plastic. It probably was true. So after the show, everyone is having a good time. Everybody's talking, drinking, congratulating Christy, taking pictures. The ladies congratulated Christy. But Christy is upset that everyone is nicely dressed. Um, and she says in her confessional that Todd looks like a bum. Oh my gosh, who says that about their husband? Um, Christy said that Todd, Todd, that Todd showed up with no socks. Tennis shoes, sweatpants, and an old polo shirt. Oh, my gosh. I think she should have picked out his outfit for him. She knows that's how we dress on a regular, so she should have picked out his outfit for him. I guess she figured since it's her special night, he would dress up for her, but hell no. No socks, sweatpants, tennis shoes, and an old polo shirt. Wow, Todd, really? Mm-mm. Christy said that she is disgusted by him. What a thing to say about your husband on national TV. Wait till he watches. No wonder they're getting a divorce. 
<laughs> Those are some harsh words to say about your husband. Uh, Christy told Todd that she wants him to get better and be um, go on this journey with her, and he promised that he'd get that he'd get make himself better. Okay, Tan next scene is Tanya and Joe. They're at home and they're discussing the scenarios on um, regarding um, the little people re people's retreat. So they agreed to um, let the kids stay home with the nanny and then they'll go on the retreat to get together 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 together. <laughs> Christy and Todd goes to a restaurant called Greenleaf. I guess it's a health food restaurant. In her confessional, Christy said that she and Todd are moving in separate directions. Christy said that her only problem is her marriage because her career is going well, her, everything is going well, her health is going well. She lost her weight, she's getting her skin um, removal surgery, everything, her fashion show is doing well, everything is going well for her. She was in a... Um, uh, a film, a movie premiere film or whatever, a big film. Everything's going well for her but her dad go on marriage. And she said that she cares more about Todd's health than he does. And I think that Todd is comfortable. Now that he has a wife, he's comfortable. You know when you're single, you dress up. You always, your hair, you, you make sure your hair is done. You, you're showered, fresh clothes, you're looking good, you're smelling good. You know, because you're single and you're trying to catch somebody's attention, right? But now that he's married, he don't care. Why should he smell good, look good, feel good? He's married now, so he's like, hey, get it. I'm, I'm fine. I don't need to, do, you know, do all the things that, that I was doing when I was single. So I think that's where he is right now in his head. Um, Christy said that um, thinking about going to Mexico with Todd um, sounds like a nightmare to her. And um, Christy's trying to talk Todd out of going to Mexico. That is some mess. <laughs> Christy tells Todd that she is worried about him going to Mexico because of his mobility issues. You know, his hip, his knee, he can't go anywhere, he can't do anything really. And Todd says that he's fine and Christy told him that his hip is shot. And um, he's still talking about how he's fine and, you know, he'd be okay. And Chrissy just finally comes out and tells him that she don't want him going to go into um going to um, Mexico. And Todd told Chrissy that he really wants to go. And Christy said all he's gonna do is sit in the hotel room and order room service. He's not gonna do anything. So she does not want him to go. And then they start talking about his water therapy, and he said he didn't do water therapy because he thought the doctor would do his surgery anyway, even without him doing um, water, the water therapy. And um, inst but instead, the doctor told me to do the um, the um, water the water therapy, and he has no excuse. And the doctor postponed his his surgery, so now he has to do the water therapy in order to get the surgery. I think Todd is just lazy. He's just lazy. I mean, what is so hard about walking in water up to your navel? What is so hard about that? That's the easiest thing that you can do. He's coming up with all these excuses. He's got air infection, talking about the insurance don't cover it. You can just find a pool and walk in the pool. You don't need insurance to walk in a pool. I mean, I don't know. I think he's just lazy. So Christy is frustrated with him. And, you know, I don't blame her. I'd be frustrated too. So she basically told Todd to do what he needs to do to get himself healthy. And he says, I'll do it. I will. I'll do it. And then he goes to her, I'm really not going to Cancun. And she goes, no, you're not going. So, hey, she talked him out of not going. Or she bullied him into not going. Which I don't blame her. Because, you know, she would have to babysit him. He wouldn't be able to go anywhere. He'd just be taking up space. You know, and she'd be out having fun. And he'll be sitting in the room. Might as well not go. Why go? Why go? So the next scene is Jasmine and Tara go flower shopping for Tanya's grand grand opening. Um, and Tara said that she has to leave Tanya's play early because she doesn't have a babysitter. Jasmine tells Tara that um, they got the keys to their house, and the next day they're gonna be moving into their new their brand new house. So Tara tells Jasmine about her decision to leave the kids behind and that her and Joe will go to Mexico. 
And Jasmine tells Tara that Elena is not going to make it to Tanya's grand opening. And Tara is shocked. She's like, she's Tara's shocked. And Jasmine tells Tara that Elena has an acting class. And then Tara says um, she was giving um, Christy shit for going to a job versus going to her vow renewal. And now um, and uh, Tara is saying that the acting class is something that Elena can make up. And um, I agree with Tara. I agree. Even though I, lo I love Elena, sometimes she can be, um, sometimes she can be cold as ice. So, uh, Tara thinks that Tanya is going to be upset that Elena isn't coming to her, um, opening. And Tara thinks that Elena doesn't care anything about Tanya. I don't think, I think, ta um, I think that, um, that's not true. I think Elena cares about Tanya. She's just a bit selfish and absorbed, self-absorbed at times, that's all. Christy Jas the next scene is Christy Jasmine and um, Tara show up for um, Tara's opening night. In her confessional, Christy said that Tanya told her not to bring Autumn, and that means that the show is raunchy, and Christy said that's right up her alley. So, Elena is not coming, and Tara is leaving at the intermission. So I, I feel bad for Tanya because Tara can go to Mexico for a week, but she can't find a babysitter for one evening. Really? And um, Elena can't miss one acting class? If I was Tanya, I'd be pissed. I would be pissed. So Tanya play, Tanya's play is raunchy. I don't even know what it's about. I guess it's the, the, the scene is set for a club environment. But... Um, a nightclub environment or a stripper, a strip club, and a strip club. I've never been to a strip club, but I I see them on TV all the time. So I think a strip club is girls dancing on a pole on a stage, and some girls giving guys lap dance. In this, it's it, it's a play, so I guess they can't be as too realistic because there was only two guys in the play, two customers in the bar, in the strip bar, strip club, with a bunch of girls, and this one girl is crawling on her knees. In reverse. Why she's doing that, I don't, that's not sexy. She's crawling on her knees in reverse. One girl is doing the splits. One girl is, I guess she's straddling a guy. I guess she's lap dancing him. She's stra straddling him in a chair very aggressively. And a guy is eating a peach. And I guess the peach represents a woman's body part. Now why would a guy be eating a peach in a um, strip club? He's not on display. He's the customer. He's supposed to be sitting there throwing out dollars. I didn't see anybody throwing out dollars. And, um, what's her name? Tanya didn't even make an entrance in the first half of the play. She wasn't in the play the very first half. And she said she was starring in the play. She said she was producing the play and starring in the play. But anyway, at intermission, Tara left. Tara leaves. And then the third act comes on. And, um, Tanya uh, makes her appearance. And I guess she's the owner of the club. She has this little gun shooting money out. I don't even know what she was talking about, what she was saying. And they barely showed the audience. Um, and I think there was less than 10 people in that audience. The audience, it wasn't much. It wasn't many people. I guess they didn't promote the play um, well enough. This was the grand opening. It should have a whole bunch of people there. Everybody's and your mama should have been there. The girls should have invited their husbands. I mean, hardly anybody was there in the um, audience. I think there was more people on stage than there were in the audience. But anyway, well, let me see what happens. So at the end, you know, after the play was over with, Jasmine and Christy gave Tanya um, flowers. They congratulated her with hugs. And Jasmine told Tanya that Tara had to leave um, after the first half because, you know, she had to get home to the kids because she didn't have a babysitter. And um, Jasmine also told Tanya that Elena told her that she wasn't coming because she wanted to, um, she didn't want to miss her acting class. And Tanya is is not happy that Elena um, missed her grand opening night for an acting class. Tanya said that Elena could have made up that class and Jasmine agrees with her. Then Tanya said that she will deal with um, that in Mexico. And Tanya also said that she 
she went to Elena's book reading and she went to Elena's photo um, photo shoot. So, you know, she's supporting Elena and Elena can't support her, basically is what she's saying. And um, Jasmine asks Tanya if her daughter is going to Mexico and Tanya says, yes, her daughter is going. And Jasmine says that her husband Chris is 80% going to, to um to Cancun. What's 80%? He, he's either going or he's not going. He's 80% going. So 80% of his body is going, the other 20 is not. Please. Anyway. Um, and Jasmine also tell, told um, Tanya that Tara and Joe, they're going to Mexico and they're leaving the kids behind. And um, Tanya asked Jasmine, why are they not taking the kids? And Jasmine says, because Penny's doctor says she can't travel, she can't fly. And um, Tanya is um, shocked that Tara didn't tell her that she wasn't taking the kids to um, to Mexico. And Jasmine said, you didn't know? She was like, no, Tanya didn't, didn't tell her, didn't tell me that the kids weren't going. And Tanya's like, I'm the godmother, how come she didn't tell me? And Jasmine's like, I don't know why she didn't tell you. And, um, um, what's her name? Tanya said she didn't have time to talk to Tara because she's been rehearsing. That's not true. She had plenty of time to talk to Tara. She, um, was at the, um, the book reading with Tara. She was at the for photo shoot with Tara. She was at the fashion show with Tara. She never talked to Tara about her, um, her kids at all. And Tara didn't talk to her about it. And, um, Tanya seems hurt that she didn't tell her about, um, not taking the kids to Cancun. And she's the godmother. The next scene is Christy meets up with Susanna at a cafe. And they talk about Tara and Christy's beef. Christy told Susanna about the Little People's Retreat and asked Susanna if she wants to go. And I love Susanna. She says, yes, she wants to go. She would love to go. And she's going to be putting on her bathing suit with all her with her um, third belly out. Just like me. Me and you, um, Susanna. Me and you, we're going to wear our third belly out. So uh, Susanna asked Christy if Todd was going. And Christy basically told Susanna that Todd um, wasn't going on a trip because of his health issues. Susanna said that Todd either likes being in pain or he likes Christy um, babying him. And Christy said she used to put on Todd's shoes for him. And at one time she even wiped his butt for him. Oh my gosh. Imagine having to do, it, having to, do that. All I can say to Christy is I'm sorry, Christy. <laughs> I am sorry. Christy said that Todd doesn't even want to go to the movies because the movies have stairs. But he doesn't have to climb the stairs. You don't have to climb the steps and go all the way up top to the movie theater. They have the bottom steps, but then you'll be at the movies looking like this, looking at the movie theater like this, looking at the screen like this. <laughs> Some movie theaters, though, they have step, they have um, rows back that you don't have to go up the steps. So he can go to the movies. He just doesn't want to do anything. He just wants to stay home. Uh, Chrissy said that Todd does not want to go anywhere, and he is raunchy as hell. Oh, my gosh. Wow. What a thing to say about your husband. When he watches this, what does he think? No wonder they're getting a divorce in real life. Oh my gosh. That is so disgusting. He's raunchy as hell. Does that mean he doesn't bathe, change his clothes, put on deodorant? She says he's raunchy as hell. And she has to sleep with him? She has to sleep in the same bed as he sleep? Oh God. Why don't she tell him to, to, to bathe and change his clothes and put on deodorant, put on cologne? Why don't she tell him to do all of that? Oh my gosh. I guess when you're that big, you don't want to do anything. You know, when you're that big, you don't want to move around and, and do anything. Wow. Um, she also says that he has no passion at all. I don't know what that means. That means they're not having sex? Is that what that means? I don't know. Um, Christy just basically bitches. She bitch about Todd for about 15, 20 minutes to poor Suzanne. Suzanne hardly gets a word in edgewise. She just sits there and listens. But I do feel bad for poor Christy. If I was Christy, I would dump Todd in a heartbeat. I would dump him so fast his head would spin. I'm sorry, but I would. You know, he's raunchy. I mean, he doesn't want to go anywhere. doesn't want to do anything. doesn't want to get healthy. don't even want to go walk in the deck on pool. Anyway, that was the end of this episode. Next episode, like, is going to be good also. I loved, um, what's her name? Christy's fashion show. That was really, really good. Really, really nice. And her clothes look good, too. I couldn't believe how good her clothes looked. 
This Abshem Miguel wasn't there to see his the fruits of his labor. But anyway, get my remote. Ah, Princess on a pillow here. Thank you very much for watching. What time is it? It's 9.05.